The Tesla touchscreen is probably one of the premier features in the Model 3 and in all Tesla vehicles. All of them have these giant touchscreens instead of the usual buttons and knobs you probably see on most other cars. And that can be a bit intimidating if you are not used to using a touchscreen to control your car. So today I'm just going to be going over every single feature that the Tesla touchscreen has. So if you're a potential owner, you know what to expect. And if you're a current owner, you might learn some things. Okay, so when you first hop in the car, the first thing you're probably going to notice is the side panel on the left here. So at the top is your current gear. So when you're in park, it'll just say P. But then once we get driving, I will show you that it actually becomes your speedometer. You also see your car right here with some buttons to open up the frunk and the trunk as well as the charge port. And then down at the bottom, you've got a couple symbols here. The one on the far left actually opens up the camera. So if you want to pop that open real quick and see what's behind you, you can do that. As, long, as well as the two side cameras will pop up down below here. If you click on the charging symbol right here, you can see some details about your battery. Currently I have 124 miles left, and you can also set your charge limit. If you hit that button right there, you can drag it to wherever you'd like to set it. And this actually becomes your charging screen to see your rate of charge and some more details about charging when you are plugged in, which we'll get to in a little bit. If you hit this button right here, you can do voice commands, but I don't want to do any of those right now, so I'm just going to cancel that. You also got a button to adjust your wipers. So down here, I can click on that. And right now I just have it on auto, but if I want it to do manual, I can just click on that and my wipers will turn on. But I'm gonna switch that back to auto for now. You've also got some different side panels here. So if I swipe over to this side, I can see that since 11.23, I have driven 1.2 miles. It's been four minutes and I used 270 watt hours per mile. You can also see some more details, so since my last charge, and you can also set current trips right here. I haven't adjusted any of these, but I have labeled this one as my lifetime, so you can see my lifetime miles, kilowatt hours used, and efficiency right there, as well as your odometer there down at the bottom. If you swipe over to the right, you are usually able to see your current tire pressure, but I have not driven recently, so I think those will kick back up once I start driving here. So, to show off uh, some more of the features, I'm actually going to drive to the nearest charger and plug in there so you guys can see the charging screen and also see what this looks like and this whole side panel looks like while we're driving. So, I'm going to put my foot on the brake and put it in drive here and we'll get moving. And you see the car moves into the view as if you're driving, not just sitting parked, kind of a bird's eye view behind you. And Right now I'm on hold, which means I can let my foot off of the brake and it will not move. It does that by default, but there are some settings to adjust that. But we're going to get driving here and head to the nearest charger. So you'll see on that left panel that it's now showing my speed on the top left. And you'll probably see some of the visualization of the different cars and signs and such around me as I'm driving. You can also see the lights turn on to show my turn signal is turned on and that will flash right there. The little line below the speedometer there will show how much energy I'm using. So if I've got a black bar there, the bigger the black bar means I'm using more energy. And then if I let my foot off the gas, you'll see that the green bar pops up to show that I am uh, using that regen and getting some, batter some charge back into the battery. So you'll see as we come up to the stop sign here, I've got a stop sign showing up and the car in front of me is showing there. Also shows the current speed limit in this area. And you'll see as I get onto a, out onto a main road here, it will actually pop up with the dash lines and solid lines to show me what the street looks like.
You'll see it actually also shows turn lanes and stuff like that as well. I've got a double yellow on my left, so it's showing that. And as we get up to the stoplight, you'll see that the stoplights actually show up as well. So I've got four red stoplights in front of me, and you'll see as soon as they turn green, those will turn green on the screen here as well. So we got the green arrow. Okay, so we are onto the highway now, and you'll probably see that this little gray steering wheel has popped up. That means I can turn on autopilot right now. So if I double press down on my right stock, it'll enable autopilot. And when you're in autopilot, you've got some different things that pop up on the screen here. You can see the speed that I'm set to right now, and I can adjust that with the right steering wheel button. I can move that up to 70 miles per hour. The blue lines just show that I'm on autopilot, that's showing the edge of the lane lines. I can also adjust my following distance with my right steering wheel button. So if I move that up closer, you'll see that pop up on the touchscreen. If I'm driving and need to turn on the wipers for some reason, as soon as I click the wiper button, the, but the controls will pop up down on the bottom here and I'll be able to adjust those manually if necessary. When I am on autopilot, you'll see that this little steering wheel turns blue, just showing me that I'm on autopilot, and you'll see as soon as I take it off, it'll switch back to that gray steering wheel, showing me that autopilot is available. And you can see we're getting a lot of regen as we get off the off-ramp here. And since I've got regen down to zero enabled, anytime I let off the gas, my car will come all the way to complete stop and then automatically go into this hold. So it will not move unless I hit the accelerator again. You'll see my rear view mirror actually pops up, rear view camera, excuse me, pops up automatically when I put it in reverse. And I'm going to go plug the car in real quick, and you guys will get to see what the screen looks like while I'm plugging in. So now that we're plugged in, you'll see that the charging screen pops up automatically to show that we are charging. We'll show us our time remaining up in the top left, show us our miles to empty right there, show us our charging speed in miles per hour, our added miles, our current amperage and our current voltage that we're set at right now. Down at the bottom, you can actually adjust the charge current, which I have done before if I'm gonna be parked for a while, um, just so my car finish up, finishes up charging when I am ready to leave. You can also kind of do that automatically by scheduling departure. So if you click on that, you can say, I want to start charging at this time, or I want to depart at this time, and it'll just take care of all the charging for you automatically. I have that off right now. And if you are supercharging, it'll actually show you how much your supercharging will cost you. You can also stop charging with that button up there. So we'll go ahead and close that. Okay, so if you haven't already noticed, the touchscreen is kind of split up into three different parts. You've got the side panel on the left here that is open at all times, unless you are parts charging and like watching Netflix or something like that. This bottom panel, which is here all the time as well, which is just your uh, quick access controls to get to things that you might need to very quickly. And then on the right side here is kind of your main screen. By default, it has the map up at all times with some different uh, controls around them. And then up top, you've got some other quick controls as well. So let's start just on this main screen here. Uh, if we look at the top bar here, the top left will show us if our car is locked or not. So you can click to lock and unlock that. The time is right there. We've got our current exterior temperature. We've got the Tesla logo right there. So if we click on that, it'll bring up details about the car. So I've got a Model 3 long range dual motor. You can see my odometer, my VIN number, and my current software version. You can also pull up the owner's manual, which is pretty handy. This actually loads from the car itself, so you don't have to wait for anything to download or anything like that. So I can pull up details about the owner's manual and learn just about everything I want to about the car. 
So see, for example, I can pull up the touchscreen overview if I want to learn more about the touchscreen and learn what things do. But that's why you're watching the video. So we'll go ahead and close that. And you can also see my name of my car, name Flux right here. I can adjust the name of my car right there. And I can also open the release notes for the current software I'm running right now. So recently I just got it a few new features with a software update and I can learn a little bit more about those right there. If I close that, I think that was all on this screen. I've also got the Tesla roadside assistance number. If I do need help with my car and I am stuck somewhere, I can call them and they will assist you. If we close that, you can, we'll move across the top a little bit more here. You'll see currently I'm in easy entry mode and these are all of my different driver profiles. So if we wanna pull up those settings, we can see details about the different driver profile settings. So I've got, for example, I've got my basic one, which is just me, Alex, sets my seat and steering wheel exactly how I want it, sets some of my other settings how I want those as well. But for example, I've also got one for theater. So if I'm watching a movie or something like that, I want to recline a little bit, be a little bit more comfortable, I can click on that from my driver profile up here and it will automatically adjust the seat for me. This next button right here is to enable and disable sentry mode. So if I click on it and the red dot is on, that means that sentry mode is enabled. And if I click it again, it will disable sentry mode, but I'm gonna leave that on. If I click on this button right here, this is my dash cam. So if I'm driving and I click that button, it will automatically save the last 10 minutes of driving. So I have that saved on my solid state drive that's connected to my car and it is saved forever. It's not gonna get deleted, for example, if I fill up all of that space. I can also launch the uh, viewer from right here. So if I wanna see some sentry mode clips or dash cam clips from when somebody's been around my car, I can do that. So this is just the last, uh, last few minutes my, that my car has been sitting here and I can pull up different views and see what's been going on around my car. I can also click on here and pull up dash cam for example. So some of these are saved clips where I've like honked at a car or something like that and I can pull those up right away and if you click on the dot right here it'll bring you right to when the event happened. So let's see what happened right here. I think in this example a car was swerving into the turn lane right here. I think this truck was getting a little bit too close. Yeah, so I beeped on him there. <laughs> so you can watch sentry mode and dash cam clips there. If you click on the little LTE symbol right here, you can actually pull up different Wi-Fi networks. And this is where you connect to your home Wi-Fi and can quickly open up Wi-Fi settings as well and adjust some of those, uh, choose your Wi-Fi network but by default, it just pulls up your current LTE signal strength. If you click on the Bluetooth logo up here, you can set some of your Bluetooth settings. So currently I've got my Pixel 3 XL connected. I can change some settings here. If I want it to uh, sync my messages or chime on new messages, I can turn that on right here. I've also got this set as a priority device. So my girlfriend's phone is connected to my car as well. But if we're both in the car, by default, it connects to my device instead of hers. I can also forget the device if I switch to a new phone and want to pair a new one, and I can add a new one there as well. So that's about it on the top row there. If uh, we look onto the navigation screen now, by default it just looks like this, but if I tap anywhere on the map, it pulls up some additional controls here. So I can move in and out. I can turn on and off satellite view. If I want to do that, I can turn on and off the different traffic. So I'm sure if we look down into downtown Columbus, a little more traffic, and we'll see that the red lines are like worse traffic, yellow lines are medium traffic, but I can turn those on and off with that. If I want to see where the nearest chargers are, I can click that and they will pop up. And I can also adjust what kind of chargers I want to see. So the lightning bolts are just the strength or speed of charge. So if I wanna see all of them, I can turn on all the different speeds, but right now I've just got the superchargers showing. So anything that is 150 kilowatts and higher will pop up on the map here. This little navigate button up here, if I click on that, it will pop up with current places I've been to recently around Columbus. 
can also set my home and work locations right there. If I swipe down or swipe to the right, I will automatically navigate to home. And I believe it does the same if I swipe to the right. Okay, so that is about it for the map part of the touchscreen. If I move down to the bottom screen right here, we'll see that we've got a little car icon right here, a music icon, a little quick access with some more menu items. And then this whole right part of the screen is all of my climate controls. So if I click on the seats right here, that will turn on the heated seats. And if I just tap again, it will lower them. I can turn on and off my climate right here. If I click on the little fan, it'll actually bring up this whole climate window where I can adjust where the air is blowing. And I can also turn off auto or turn on auto. So if I want a little bit more control over my climate, I can do that all right here. So if I wanna set my air coming out of the top, air coming down by my feet, set the fan speed, turn on or off air circulation. I can also turn on to allow my climate to stay on as soon as I leave the car. So the car will just stay on with the climate on until my battery reaches 20%. You can also do dog mode right here and also do camping mode if you are sleeping in your car. I've got all those off by default right now. And I generally just leave it on auto and set the temperature I want and let the car do the work there. If you click on this other little side screen here, you can adjust all of the heated seats. So I can turn all of them on. If I've got people in the back that want their heated seats on and you can click this to turn them on all off. All right, click to close that. I can also adjust the temperature right here either with the arrows or I can click the temperature right here and slide to adjust my temperature depending on how cold or how warm I want it. These two on the right here, this one will turn on a cooled front window. If I click it again, it'll actually turn on a warm front window. And then my rear window is the same right here. But I've only got a, uh, can only heat my rear window, I can't cool it. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And then on the far right right here is where I adjust my volume. You, I generally do not use this. Again, you can all either use the arrows or slide to adjust your media volume. But I generally just use the buttons on the steering wheel because it's a little bit quicker and easier. So if we move back over to these buttons over here, we'll go ahead and open up the car settings right here. And by default, it always opens up to the quick controls if you've got to adjust some things real quick while you're driving. So up top, I've got my light settings. I can either turn them off I generally just leave them on auto. You can also turn on or off your front fog lights. This is also where you make your different adjustments to your driver settings. So I can adjust my mirrors right here and then finish that off with the steering wheel. Can adjust the rights and lefts. Also change some settings for my mirror auto tilt and auto fold. So by default, if you're in reverse, the mirrors actually tilt down a little bit so it's easier to see where you're parking. And they auto fold when you are in park. And also adjust the steering wheel right here, again, by just using the controls on the steering wheel. And you can also fold and unfold your mirrors depending on where you're at. If you choose to fold them, you can choose to always fold mirrors at this location. So if for some reason you are parking in your garage and you get to your garage, it will automatically fold the mirrors or you're parked in a certain location, you like to have your mirrors folded, you can set them to always fold at a certain location. So go ahead and unfold those. You can also set the window locks right here. So if you don't want anybody adjusting your windows except for yourself in the driver's seat, you can turn those on and off right there. You can also adjust your display brightness right here as well. I've generally just got this on auto. I think it does a pretty good job of adjusting depending on the different lighting conditions. So we'll move on down to the lights. Again, you've got the exterior light settings the same as on the quick control screen. We've also got some interior light options right here. So if you want to adjust how your dome lights inside the car turn on and off, do that. You can also turn on and off your ambient lights that are underneath the seats. Got some settings down here for auto high beam, headlights after exit, and steering wheel lights. You can turn those on and off depending on what you prefer. Moving on down to locks on the left there. With the Model 3, your phone is your key, so you'll see that all of the different keys I've got connected are right here. 
You can also again adjust your window locks and child locks for those rear doors. You can also turn on and off your walk away door lock with your phone key. And if you want to, you can exclude home. So if your car, if you like to keep your car unlocked while you're at home, you can turn, check that box. I've also got it uh, to unlock on park. So as soon as I put my car in park, all the doors unlock and people are able to get out. This is somewhat new of a setting, but I've now got notifications on if my doors or windows are left open. So if for some reason I park somewhere, I've got a window cracked or somebody left a door open, I'll get a notification on my phone saying that the door or window has been left open. And again, you can exclude home for these notifications. You've also got a couple settings down here that do a confirmation sound for when you do lock the car and also uh, settings to close the windows when you do lock the car as well. Moving over to display, we've got some display settings. So you can either switch from day or night mode on your display. I generally, again, just leave this on auto so it will turn on night mode as soon as the sun goes down. I've also got a screen clean mode. So if you click on that, it will make your screen completely black. So you're able to clean it off without bumping any of the buttons on the screen. And once you're done, all you have to do is hold down to exit for about five seconds and your screen will pop back open. You can adjust your different languages here. I've got English, obviously, because that is what I speak and understand. And the same with your navigation languages. Got a couple options there. You can adjust your time format to either 12 or 24 hours, depending on what you choose. We'll adjust the clock up there. For energy display, this is the one that I probably change the most often. I like bumping between percent and distance. So if you watch right here, if I choose energy, it'll change to a percentage. If I choose distance, it'll show my miles to empty right there. I'm actually going to switch that back to energy because that's what I've been liking recently. If you are a Celsius person, you can switch your temperature to Celsius up here. I prefer Fahrenheit because that is what I understand. And I'll set that right there. You can also adjust how you see your tire pressure and those should be popping up now. But you can either adjust them to show in bar or pounds per square inch. Your driving settings are all right here. Acceleration, I like it on standard because I like that little extra punch, but if you want to have more of a chill drive and don't want as much uh, acceleration when you hit that accelerator, you can adjust it down to chill. It's also a little bit more efficient too, so if you are doing some long driving, that's probably a good choice. You can adjust your steering as well. By default, it's just in standard. That's what I like. Sport tightens it up a little bit, so the more you move your steering wheel, it's a little more responsive, and comfort is probably the complete opposite of sport. So the more you move the steering wheel, it doesn't move your car as much. But I prefer standard. It's a good balance of both. Regen braking, you can either set it to low or standard. I like standard. I like that extra efficiency and also like the whole one pedal driving. But if you don't like that as much, you can set that to low and have less regen braking. The stop mode is what I was talking about earlier. So right now I've got it to hold. So if I let off of the accelerator, my car will come to a complete stop without me pressing the brake. If I need to emergency brake, my brake is still enabled. I can still use my brake. But if I don't need to or I'm driving accurately, I won't need to use the brake at all. You can also set slip start right here which will help free vehicles stuck in snow, sand, or mud. Thankfully, I've not had to use that yet, but you do have it available right there. Your autopilot settings are on the next screen, and this will look a lot different depending on what type of autopilot you have. I am running enhanced autopilot, so I've got some of the full self-driving features, but not all of them. Uh, so I've got auto steer enabled. I've got navigate on autopilot enabled. You can also customize your navigate on autopilot settings right here. So I've got it enabled by default at the start of every trip. So as soon as I plug in a destination, Navigator on Autopilot is enabled. And when I hop on the highway, it'll do most of the work for me. I can also adjust my lane change speed. So I've just got it on average. So if the car in front of me is going a little bit slower than me, then it will move around them. I've also got it set to exit the passing lane. So if I am in that far left lane, it will move over for me if I've been sitting there for too long. And I do have the lane change confirmation enabled. I don't like the car 
changing lanes without me knowing about it. So I do have that confirm confirmation on there. So I do have to still hit the turn signal stock to move the car over. If I do change this to no, you'll see that I d these settings are now enabled. So I can either, when it does do the lane change by itself, I can have it chime, vibrate, do both, something like that. But I like having that confirmation on. I've also got my full self-driving visualization preview enabled. That was what you were seeing while we were driving earlier. Shows just all the cars around you, the stoplights, the stop signs, trash cans, cones, all that fun stuff will show up on the left side here. I've also got summon enabled and I can customize summon right there. So I can change the how tight I want the bumper to get to things, the side clearance, re requiring continuous press, all that kind of stuff is all right there. So I can also enable standby mode right here, which means that my car is essentially ready to go with summon as soon as I press summon on my phone. So right now I've got this off, which probably explains why summon takes so long on my car. I've really got to just wake it up and like do a bunch of stuff to wake up my car before I can actually use summon. So if I were to enable this, summon would probably move a little bit quicker. But also it's gonna use more energy while you're in standby. So I'm actually gonna leave that off for now. I did do a whole video on enhanced autopilot and just kind of my first reaction to it. Talked a little bit more about these settings and walked through uh, enhanced autopilot. So if you wanna watch that, all of that linked up in the top right and down in the description. Hey, this is Alex from the future here. This center part actually just got a change here. So instead of what we saw earlier, we now have different options for setting our autopilot speed. So you can either do speed limit or current speed. So if I do the speed limit, which is probably what I'm gonna do here, and I can change the offset to either a miles per hour or a percentage. So if I'm at, let's say the speed limit is 45 miles per hour, I can set the offset to five miles per hour. So when I enable autopilot, it will be set at 50 miles per hour. If instead I wanna do a percentage, I can do that as well. So let's say I wanna go 5% faster than the speed limit. So it gives us an example here. Uh, we're gonna do 5%. So if the speed limit is 35 miles per hour, that means it will be set at 37 miles per hour. So for now, I will probably leave that at the speed limit and leave that as a percentage. And let's go with what I think is good. Like 10% faster, that sounds right. 10% sounds good. So like it's saying right here, if I'm going 35 miles per hour, then it will be set to 38 miles per hour. Also got some more driving and autopilot settings down here. I've got the speed limit warning just to display. So it kind of flashes up in the top right if I'm going over the speed limits. You can also set it to chime if you really want it to yell at you that you're going over the speed limit. You can also adjust how the speed limits uh, is adjusted on autopilot. So right now I've just got it set to relative, which means that my speed limit for autopilot will adjust as the speed limit on the road adjusts. So for example, if the speed limit is 35 miles per hour, my car will be set to 35 miles per hour when I'm on an autopilot. If I set it to absolute, that means that autopilot won't go above 50 miles per hour or it will be set at 50 miles per hour by default as soon as I enable it. Then I'll be able to adjust it after that. But I like leaving it on relative just because it makes things a little bit easier and I don't have to do as much thinking while I'm on autopilot. I've also got some settings for the forward collision warning. So if the car is sensing that there's a car in front of you, it will yell at you and beep really loud saying you're gonna run into this car. So I've got that set on early. So if I'm even like remotely close to rear ending somebody that yells at me pretty quick so I can press on that brake. I've also got the lane departure avoidance warning on, meaning that if I start departing a lane while I'm driving, it will beep at me. The assist will actually help pull you back into your lane. I don't like that as much because I like to still be in control of the car if I'm not on autopilot. And I've also got all of these other settings enabled. These are just additional settings and chimes that help make your driving safer. So I like having all those enabled by default. 
If we move down to the navigation, we'll see some more settings here. Can adjust the sound or sound level of the navigation assistant right there. So when it's telling you to make a turn coming up in a thousand feet or something like that, you can adjust how loud that is. And those sound settings are independent from your music. So if your music is blasting, you might not be able to hear your navigation if it's still down low right there. You can also turn on automatic navigation, which kind of uses Tesla's AI to anticipate where you're gonna go using either your home or work schedule or your next calendar event to assume where you wanna go. I've got that turned off right now just because my driving has been kind of sporadic and I don't find it very helpful. So I've just got it off. I like just choosing where I wanna go uh, instead of letting the car decide. I've got trip planner enabled, which will automatically route you through superchargers on your route to your destination, which means if you are gonna run out of charge, it will automatically send you to the local, the closest supercharger so you are charged up and can continue on your route. Online routing is also enabled, which I like because it will take traffic conditions into account and will also reroute you if it saves more than whatever your allotted time is right here. So if it saves me more than five minutes, I've got it set to reroute me. If you're traveling in an area with tolls or ferries or HOV lanes, you can adjust those settings right there. So if you want to avoid tolls, you can turn those on. Or if you would prefer to use the HOV lane out in California, you can do that as well. We don't have any of those really in Ohio, so I've got that off. Moving on to the safety and security menu right here. If I want to enable the parking brake, I can actually do that right now. So if I put my foot on the brake, I can enable the parking brake, which actually tightens up those calipers even more so that your car isn't gonna move around. I can also power off the touchscreen right here. So if I want to completely shut it down, I can do that right here, but I'm charging right now, so I don't wanna do that. You can also enable speed limit mode right here. So if you're lending the car to your kids or something like that, and you don't want them going over 50 miles per hour, you can turn that on and it literally won't let the car go faster than 50 miles per hour. Uh, there's also a pin to lock that as well if you are lending your car out to somebody. Sentry mode settings are also right here, which will turn on all the cameras around the car while you are away from your car to record any potential uh, vandalism or anything like that. You could also set it to exclude home or work or any favorites you've got on your map. Got some dash cam settings here. I've got it enabled to save clips on honk, so if I do hit the horn, the dash cam automatically saves the footage. I don't have to worry about reaching up here and manually saving any footage. And they just added this feature as well. If you need to format your USB de device, uh, as soon as it's plugged in, you can click that. It will automatically format it so it is working with sentry mode and the, and the built-in dash cam. I've also got some more settings down here. The park assist chime, so if it's, it'll beep if you're getting close to things and uh, about to run into things at lower speeds. I've also got Joe mode right here, which will reduce the volume of certain car chimes, so it's not as loud for anyone in the cabin. I've also got the security alarm enabled. Pin to drive you can turn on, which is kind of a, an additional step to start your car. So if for some reason somebody f steals your phone, and gets into your car, they still won't be able to drive till they type in a pin. I've also got a glove box pin to enable right here to lock uh, your glove box down a little bit more. So even if somebody gets to your car and wants to open the glove, glove box, they cannot do that. Cabin overheat protection is something I had on most of the summer. This actually will reduce the temperature in your car below 105 degrees if for some reason it gets super hot outside, it'll just vent the AC and turn on the AC for a little bit just to keep it below 105 degrees in here so you're not damaging anything that's sitting in your car. Definitely something I suggest if you leave your car parked outside a lot just to keep anything from melting inside the car. I've also got some data sharing settings down here, allow mobile access, I believe that's for your phone and for Tesla service if they need to do a remote diagnostic or anything like that can also turn on data sharing uh, to send a Tesla. So I've got most of this stuff on just because I want to help the Tesla cars get even better. And this basically sends some of your driving data totally anonymously to Tesla so that they can improve their cars. On the service tab here, we've got some important stuff that you probably need to know. 
Wiper service mode will move your wipers up a little bit so that you can service them and change them or change out your wipers. This is also a good thing to turn on if it's gonna be snowy or icy wherever you're parking so that your uh, wipers don't get stuck to your car. Again, you can pull up the owner's manual like we did earlier. You can adjust the headlights, which I'm not gonna do right now. You can also turn on towing mode, which kind of adjusts the car so it's more able to be towed. Uh, preferably, you can use a flatbed. Tesla does not suggest using anything where your car has its wheels on the ground just because the motors are not designed for that and can actually burn them up because they are not designed to be dragged like that. We've also got some settings for the uh, tire pressure monitoring uh, system sensors right there. I'm not gonna reset those right now. You can also change your wheel configuration. So if for some reason you switch your wheels to the aero cap kit, for example, you can adjust those and your car will look different. Right now I've got the aero wheels on, so I'm gonna leave those how they are. You can look at your notifications here. So as just earlier, I put on the brake and tried to shift into park while my car was charging and it says it's unable to drive because my charge port is plugged in right now. So you can see any past notifications or important notifications about your car right there. You can also do a camera calibration. So if for some reason autopilot just isn't working right, you can completely clear the calibration and just start it over, which just means that you need to do some driving on the highway for those to recalibrate. And you can also do a factory reset down at the bottom there, which will completely wipe your car and just kind of set it back to factory settings. If we go to the software tab, you can see that I have some more information about my car here. You can see the that I have the enhanced autopilot package. I've also got premium connectivity that is set to auto renew on November 13th. And I can also see my current software version and navigation data as well as pull up the release notes again if I'd like to. The software update preferences are also right here. So I've got it set to advanced because I want the latest and greatest software from Tesla, but if you want to wait a little bit longer and uh, just wait for the software to get smoothed out a little bit more, you can set it to standard. And that's about it on this screen. The only button left is the glove box. So you do have to click that to open the glove box. There is no manual latch or anything like that, which is a bit unfortunate, but that is just how Tesla has designed the car. So that is about it on this screen. We do have some additional vehicle information right there. If you do wanna see even more information about your car, you can see the autopilot computer. I've got the full self-driving computer. I've got, I do not have the garage door opener installed. You can see the infotainment processor. You can see the motor type of my front and rear motor. And again, I can also adjust the name of the car right here if I'd like to. And I think that's about it on this screen. So if we pull up the music tab right here, you can see that again, we get kind of the menu bar at the bottom here. And first up is the radio. You do have regular FM radio in this car and you can directly tune to whatever station you want and also get kind of a list of the stations that it's recognizing in my area. You can also just stream music from my phone. So if I wanna just pull up something on my phone and play it, I just have to click on here so that it knows it to pull music from my phone via Bluetooth. If I wanna do regular streaming, this is just kind of like shuffling. I can't pick songs or anything like that, but if there's a specific genre or anything like that I wanna to listen to, I can pull that up here and it'll just stream a shuffle of songs. Spotify is my music uh, streaming service of choice. Hey, this is Alex from the future again. We've got uh, a little bit of an update to Spotify on the latest update, so now we've got Spotify with a lot more options on the side panel here, and you've actually got a home tab now with some suggestions based on your listening history. Do have karaoke as well, so if I want to listen to some Let It Go, for example, I can pull that up and it will show the lyrics on screen as well, which is pretty fun for anybody that might be, uh, might be in the car and wants to, wants to sing along to some songs. If I go over to TuneIn Radio, you can see this is where usually where I listen to podcasts because podcasts are not on the Spotify app in my car yet. Um, but I can pull up different podcasts or if you want to listen to TuneIn Radio in different locations than you're at right now, 
you can do that on here as well. If you want to do some searching, Alex from the future here again on the search tab, this also looks different in the latest update. So if I want to listen to Queen, for example, I will now see results split out by media source and by type of uh, media. So if I search for Queen, I'll get some results for songs, I'll get some results for albums, artists, playlists, podcasts, and then it'll go into the other sources like TuneIn and Karaoke and some other options there. And you can also adjust some settings for your streaming or listening to music. You can completely adjust this, which is pretty cool. I've left it completely balanced, but I think I need to adjust that a little bit. You can also adjust where the center of sound is. So if you're the only one in the car, you can just set it to go on your seat. Or if you've just got people in the back seat for some reason and you only want them hearing the music, you can move that back there. I just like that in the center most of the time. Can also adjust the immersive sound either off standard or high i just like it on standard i really can't notice much of a difference but the immersive sound just feels a little bit fuller if you want dj commentary you can turn that on and off and uh, you can also adjust explicit content and those only adjust the streaming tab not anything else Again, you can turn on and off mobile control right there. So if you are listening to music on your car, there's actually something that pops up in the app showing what music is playing and you can adjust uh, what is playing through the app. And I've got that on right now. The settings tab has also changed a little bit. So the tone balance and the options there are all the same. But now we've got this sources tab where we can change which sources we want to show up. Uh, on the bottom and at uh, in the search as well. So if I enable radio and enable streaming, you'll see that those now pop up down on the bottom. I think that is about it for the music tab. Most of the controls, once you are playing music, is pretty straightforward. If you do want to quickly just close the music tab but still have the song popped up, you can click just the album art right there and it'll pop it down here so that it doesn't take up any of your map view. The rest of these screens right here are just kind of more simple screens, aren't a lot of settings or anything like that. I can pull up the call screen right here and shows me what I, who has called me recently or what calls I have made. I can see my favorites for the different people I call often. I can also pull up all of my contacts if I need to, to see if I want to call a certain person. And I've also got a dialer here as well to just type in a number I want to call. If you go back to here, you can pull up my calendar. Unfortunately, I believe it only shows the current day that you are on and will not show anything um, anything beyond what is going on uh, in the current week. So if you do click on up here, you can set some calendar settings. And I've got it when I do hop in my car to pull up the calendar by default so I know what is going on when I hop in my car in the morning. But if you're a little bit more busy, you can set it to pop up in the morning and evening. So if you, for some reason, want to see your car at both times, if you hop in your car in the morning, it'll pop up the calendar. And then maybe when you're leaving work, it'll pop up the calendar as well to show you what stuff you have going on after work is over. Or you can set it to always open. So anytime you hop in the car, it automatically pulls up your calendar so you can see what you've got going on next. In the top right, you, it looks like you can adjust which kind of calendars you've got open or got pulling to your um, pulling to your car, and you can also see which phone they are coming from right there. Again, we can pull up the camera from right here, so I can see what's going on behind me and on either side of me. You can pull up the energy tab, which I like pulling up a lot when I'm on road trips, just to see what kind of range the car is projecting uh, based on how I'm driving. So you can see that the solid line right here is the rated range and the dotted line is your projected range. So I've talked about this screen a lot in different road trip videos. So if you follow me, you've probably seen me talk about this before, but I like using this a lot more because I think it's a little bit more accurate than the just battery percentage or battery miles right here because it takes your driving style into account. So you can also see if you are driving very aggressively, maybe calm it down a little bit so that you can get some more range out of your battery. So you can see right now it's projecting 
based on how I've driven the past 30 miles, that I'll get about 129 more miles of driving. And if I wanna see my complete trip, it will pull up a graph right here showing how far I've driven, what kind of battery I've used, all that good stuff. You can also pull up the web browser from here. So I've got tesla.com pulled up right now. And if you wanna save favorites, you can click the little heart button right here and save the web page you're currently at as a favorite or you can pull up your different favorites right here. So I've got a couple of just basic ones right here. And I close it, just click on the X right there. You can also pull up the entertainment. So if you are parked and want to listen to some music on YouTube or want to watch some TV shows on Hulu or watch a movie on Netflix, you can do all that right here along with Twitch and also watch some Tesla tutorials to learn about your car can also pull up the arcade from here. So I've got a bunch of different games on here that are preloaded by Tesla, which is pretty awesome because some of these are actually paid games. So the fact that they include those for free is pretty cool. You can also open up the toy box, which is essentially all of your Easter eggs and other fun stuff that Tesla kind of used to hide in the car, but a lot of people have found now. So they've, uh, they've changed that a lot. So you've got the emissions testing mode, of course, right here and you've got the tracks. So if you wanna uh, work on your mixtape, you can do that right here. You've got romance mode, that'll bring up a nice flaming fireplace for those cozy times. You can also pull up the sketch pad and draw something and submit it to Tesla if you would like. You can also drive on Mars if you wanna adjust your navigation screen to look like the Mars surface can turn on Santa mode so that uh, your car actually turns into a sleigh while you're driving. And you've also got Rainbow Road here if you click down four times on the driving stock while you're driving on autopilot, uh, you'll get a little surprise. So those are basically all of the Easter eggs right there. And I believe I've made it through the entire Tesla touchscreen. Okay, so that will do it for my Tesla touchscreen walkthrough. If you have any questions about the different settings I went through, please let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to do a full video about any specific settings, or if it's an easy one, I can just answer you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.